Good evening. So good to see all of you this evening. What a blessing we have as together we worship the one true God. We also welcome those people who are worshiping online with us and those that will be worshiping as we get this service out to uh, the radio and also on TV and like I said, online. And we're certainly thankful to all of those that make all of that happen. For those especially who will be listening on the radio, I'm Pastor Timothy Miller, and I'm conducting the worship service. We have a special preacher today. It's Pastor Wessel, and welcome, Pastor Wessel. Pastor Wessel had been on the board of the Wells Lutheran Lutherans for Life. We also welcome all of our guests sincerely and warmly. If you'd like to know more, if you can be helped by us in any way whatsoever, please be sure to give us a call. All of our information is on the backside of the worship folder. Today is our celebration of the sanctity of life. So you'll hear that all the way through with the hymns and the readings and the sermon and everything else. And so take what you learn into your life, apply it to your everyday life, And then also talk about it with one another. Encourage each other with the Word of God in your Christian faith. So let's open our celebration of the sanctity of life as we sing the opening hymn using the blue hymnal or, uh, as you see up on the screens, hymn number 502, Children of the Heavenly Father. for this evening is Professor Randy Bodie, and we're following setting one in the blue hymnal and yet modified. Notice that the words and music for glory to God in the highest will be on the screens. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, 
and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, open the eyes of all people to see light as your gift and have compassion for small and great, young and old, healthy and sick. Move us to reflect your love and value the time of grace you have given all people through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. Our first reading for the Sanctity of Life celebration is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, beginning with verse 8. This section is often used to apply to the protection of the unborn, as they can't help themselves. Speak up for those who cannot speak. 
Speak for the rights of all those who are defenseless. Speak up, judge fairly, and defend the oppressed and needy. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 8. This reading holds within it the theme for our church and school, as you can see it up on the banner here, the theme, Walk as Children of Light. As we walk as children of light, we want to do what is pleasing in God's eyes and expose deeds of darkness. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Consider carefully then how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise people, Make the most of your time, because the days are evil. The word of the Lord. As we sing the psalm, please understand that the words and the music will be up on the big screen. So we sing Psalm 139, O God, you search me. stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Luke, the first chapter, beginning with verse 39. Note how this brings out that life is sacred, and that life which is in the womb is equally sacred, as we see how in Elizabeth the baby leaped in her womb, the Bible says, and John the baby leaped in her womb for joy. In those days, Mary got up and hurried to the hill country, to a town of Judah. She entered the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Just as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She called out with a loud voice and said, 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? In fact, just now, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who believed, because the promises spoken to her from the Lord will be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We ask you to take one of those attendance guest cards in front of you and fill it out. And after the sermon, as the offering baskets go around, just place it into one of the baskets. It helps us to encourage everybody in their Christian faith and their worship life. And those who are worshiping online can use the QR code. So also you can do that. Or the link that is on the screen as it is live streamed. The next song, we're going to have the choir, the mixed choir, help us, but the mixed choir is not here right now as far as live. It'll be here tomorrow morning at 745. However, the mixed choir recorded this song, which is hymn number 382, and it's going to be played, and we'll be all singing with them together. And so the choir sings, and we sing with the choir Hymn number 382, The People Who Walked in Darkness. Peace are yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Christian friends, we focus our attention now on God's word recorded in Psalm 139, verses 1 through 16. Lord, you have investigated me 
And do you know, do you know when I sit down and when I get up, you understand my thoughts from far off. You keep track of when I travel and when I stay, and you are familiar with all my ways. Before there is a word on my tongue, you, Lord, already know it completely. You put a fence behind me and in front of me, and you have placed your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot grasp it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. I rise on the wings of dawn. I settle on the far side of the sea. Even there your hand guides me, and your right hand holds on to me. And if I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, then even the darkness will not be too dark for you. The night will be as light as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. For you created my inner organs. You wove me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and my soul knows that very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unfinished body. In your book, all of them were written. Days were determined before any of them existed. This is God's word. Anybody ever say to you, I've got my eye on you? Depending on the circumstances, that phrase can kind of take on different shades of meaning, can't it? Depends on who's talking. Depends on what they're trying to communicate. For example, you have a prison guard doing his rounds, and he pauses by a particular cell. And the inmate in that cell has a history of creating drama, causing disruptions, generally trying to get people's attention for all the wrong reasons. As a warning, the prison guard says, I've got my eye on you. Take a very different situation. The top basketball team in the state is facing their biggest opponent, and it seems like their best player can do it all. He can score from three, he can dunk, he can make those tricky layups in the middle of three defenders. He sinks almost all of his free throws. But he's not a ball hog. He assists his teammates with lots of plays and helps them to be the best that they can be. A scout from a college basketball program shows up to the big game and introduces himself. And he tells the player, I've got my eye on you. Again, very different circumstances, but in some ways, it's the same idea, isn't it? In both cases, the person who is being watched suddenly becomes very aware of what they are doing. In both cases, it would be beneficial for each of those people to do their very best. In the first case, if the inmate is not on his best behavior... He might get punished. In the second case, if the player continues to play his best, he could be rewarded with a scholarship and a role in a nationally recognized program. Today we are reminded that God has his eye on each and every one of us. God has his eye on you. Nothing you do escapes his attention. Nowhere you go is outside of his reach. Lord, you have investigated me, and you know. You know when I sit down and when I get up. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee 
from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. What do you think about that? God is holy. God is all-powerful. He knows everything. He is with each and every one of us all the time. Now, if our mind is focused on thoughts of punishment and reward from God, we're generally left with two choices when we face him. Either we can arrogantly pretend that we are good enough to be rewarded by him, or we can face the fact that we are sinful people and we deserve nothing good and can only expect his punishment. How does David, who wrote Psalm 139, ponder these attributes of God? What does he think about this situation where, where every human every day has to live in the presence of the one who knows all and who sees all? Some of the phrases David writes here make you wonder if he's a little bit afraid of God. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Does he want to escape God's watchful eye? Well, just like in many of the other psalms that David wrote, at times he's very overwhelmed, even, even intimidated by the awesome majesty of the Lord. But then he ultimately finds comfort in the fact that God is not his enemy. God is his advocate. God is his helper. I rise on the wings of dawn. I settle on the far side of the sea. Even there your hand guides me. And your right hand holds on to me. The Lord doesn't use his intimate knowledge of every aspect of our lives to treat us like playthings or puppets. He uses his intimate knowledge of every aspect of our lives to take care of us in a way that only he can. And it all begins in the womb of our mother. Before you and I are even aware of our own existence. Now, David did not have any advanced diagnostic imaging tools that he could use to peek inside the pregnant mother and, and see the development of that tiny human being day after day week after week, but certainly he understood enough about basic biology. David had many wives and many children by those wives, so that wasn't good. His sinful foolishness got him into trouble many times. In that part of David's life, we definitely do not want to follow his example. But the Holy Spirit worked on his sinful heart, even though his sin left a terrible stain on all his marriage and family relationships, deep down David relied on the mercy of God, our Creator. And he found comfort in the fact that God accepts the sacrifice of someone else, an innocent sacrifice, to pay for his sin and to release from punishment those who are broken by their guilt and those who repent of their sin. In the beginning, God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and to multiply. But because of their sin, Eve would come to have pain in the whole issue of childbearing. And God told Adam that just as he had been made from the, the dust of the earth to live and breathe and move, because of his sin, he would return to the dust from which he came. The breath of life would leave his human body. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans, For we know that all of creation is groaning with birth pains right up to the present time. And not only creation, but also we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we eagerly await our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. That's the big picture of our existence here in this sinful world. There is pain and there is sadness. And that pain and that sadness affects issues like parenting, relationships, pregnancy. 
We are part of this creation that has been broken and torn by sin. Sometimes we're the victims of other people's sinful behavior. Sometimes we are the ones causing pain for others. And sometimes we really can't blame anybody because it's just life in this fallen world that we live in. Our hope is in Christ, Jesus, our Savior, that when he returns, he will raise our bodies from the dead to live forever in perfect paradise. But for now, we struggle. We struggle with the imperfections of this sinful world. And this whole this whole subject of, of pregnancy and child development is challenging. Sometimes the challenges can be very overwhelming. The brokenness of creation has ripple effects in our human biology. And so parents have to deal with things like miscarriages, abnormalities, infertility. These are painful situations in which people need the support and the love of people who know, people who care. There can be children who are conceived because of people's poor decision-making, or even as a result of crime. The shame and the guilt and the anger in these situations can be overwhelming, and God can seem very distant in moments like that, far, far away. But our Savior Jesus Christ is a good shepherd. He's not going to run away when the wolf comes to attack the sheep. He's going to be there with his love. And he wants us to reflect his compassion and concern when people are, are wounded. Show people that the good shepherd will not abandon the sheep. Reach out to those who are struggling. Offer to help with whatever resources you have. The giver of life redeemed both our bodies and our souls from hell. And he did that through his own miraculous conception. As the creator became one of us, his creatures. Now this psalm is not one that we would normally label a prophecy about Jesus Christ, but the one whose birth we just celebrated a month ago was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary of Nazareth. It's not like the angel Gabriel told her she was going to have a baby and then she had the baby the next day. Even though the conception was a miracle, from that point on, as far as we know, Jesus' human development was very normal. So what David says of himself here, Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Mary, could accurately say of himself, You created my inner organs. You wove me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The fact that our Creator became one of us really emphasizes just how important each one of us is from the moment that we are conceived. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us. All the fullness of God's being dwells bodily in Christ. Bodily, not just suddenly appearing as an adult, but conceived within Mary, growing slowly, nurtured by her body. In that way, she is rightly called the mother of God's Son. Not because she is divine, but because the one who is God's Son, without beginning and without end, became human. Physically, like every other child who is conceived in this world that God created. The only difference is that God preserved his son sinless in the womb of his mother Mary. All of us, every other child born in this world is born sinful, corrupted. Our confidence is in the one who was conceived to willingly carry our sin in his body and through his suffering to take away our guilt from us. As far as the east is from the west, in Christ we are forgiven, we are holy, we can stand without fear in the presence of the one who knows all and sees all. Jesus Christ shows us just how valuable each of us is and how valuable each child is. 
under what circumstances a child is conceived doesn't change the value of that child. It doesn't matter what situation the parents find themselves in. That child is valuable. God, of course, is the only one who knows the future. And so we look to him and his word for guidance. As we set a course for the future and we place our fears, our limitations into the hands of the one who cares for us. Fifty years ago tomorrow, the Supreme Court of the United States made a decision on the case of Roe v. Wade that essentially decriminalized abortion. I just turned 50 in June, so just for a little bit of frame of reference, either that seems like a long time probably for some of you, or maybe not so long for others of you. Last summer, a different Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and allowed states to regulate abortion through whatever laws they had or wanted to put in place. Now, when laws are made or courts make rulings, that can expose a lot of what is in people's hearts and minds. And when it comes down to it, what is in people's hearts is really what is most important. What guides us? What motivates us? Sometimes we share what is in our hearts. Sometimes we hide what is in our hearts. David writes, If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, then even the darkness will not be too dark for you. The night will be as light as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. God knows what is in the hearts of all people. Sometimes we share, excuse me, there is sin in all of us. Unfortunately, we struggle with our sinful nature that fights against our faith. We struggle with the devil's traps and tricks our whole life. But thank God that through the Holy Spirit we also know what is in the heart of God. His unconditional love and forgiveness for all of us. Because his son made that perfect, loving sacrifice for this world of sinners. Our Lord has a heart for every person, every child. He has a heart for every mom that nurtures that child with her own body. He has a heart for all people in all kinds of challenging family situations. So as God's people, let's work. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to bring the light of God's grace to people who are in the darkness of fear and unbelief. Let's keep on speaking and acting as people who value every life from the beginning in the womb of the mother all throughout the days of their lives here on earth until God calls that person out of this world and into eternity. And when he does that, we pray that it will be an eternity surrounded by his love and mercy through our Savior Jesus. God bless you as you praise God for your life and as you work for the good of others. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God which goes beyond our understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. As one, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we give our offering out of love for our Lord, we pass the offering baskets, and as they come up, they represent dedicating all of our offerings, those given here, those given online, and those dropped off. And again, we give those 
out of love for our Lord God, for what he's done for us. And as they come around, please be sure to place that attendance guest card in one of them. Let's sing together hymn number 515, Christ is the World's Light. Keep in our prayers Bonnie Pyrick, who was hospitalized. Also, we think of Mary Warnicke and her family as the Lord took Mary Warnicke's dad home to heaven. We also celebrate with Al and Doreen Hine as they celebrate their 45th wedding anniversary today. We go to our Lord in prayer using the prayer of the church, and we read it responsibly as we pray. We pray. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Move us all ministers of the word, wherever they serve. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. 
Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body and mind. Dear Father, look down on our Christian sister, Bonnie Pyrick, and according to your will, grant her healing. Give her patience and a childlike faith as she waits. Give to all of us a rich measure of your spirit that our faith may stand firm amidst the trials of life on this earth. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you will guide and comfort Mary Warnicke and her family at the death of Mary's father. May the family be comforted by the victory over death brought about by your own Son's resurrection from the dead. Teach us, Lord, to number our days, trusting always in Christ for eternal life. And dear Lord and giver of the sacred gift of marriage, we thank you for the 45 years of marriage with which you have blessed Alvin and Doreen Hine. Your love and grace have motivated them to love each other and remain faithful to their vows. Continue to bless them with such commitment and love as you increase their faith and love for you. Help us, Lord, to always celebrate such wonderful occasions. For finally, they are celebrations of your gifts and the power of your gospel. Give patience and compassion, dear Lord, to all who care for the sick and dying. us now, Lord, as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things and you love all people. Hear our prayers spoken and silent and answer them in your wisdom and grace. Please stand, and together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We close our worship as we sing hymn number 601, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
Once again, so good to see everybody this evening, and thank you, Pastor Wessel, for your message, and what a wonderful celebration of the sanctity of life that we've had this evening. Take it home with you and take it into your life. We will have you here tomorrow, and the reason why I'm mentioning that is because he will also be conducting Bible class, which will be from 9.10 to 10.10 with refreshments beforehand, and you're welcome to come back. It'll be over in the school cafeteria in the lower level. So that'll be tomorrow as we continue our celebration of life. Wednesday, there is also Bible study at 10 o'clock in the council chambers. Mrs. Melissa Gudix has been called by our congregation to be the early childhood ministry director and teacher, and I'd like to read her acknowledgement of the call. It says, Dear members of St. John's Lutheran, Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior continues his mission in this world by moving your congregation on Sunday to extend a divine call to be your early childhood ministry director and teacher. As I start the process of deliberating both of these calls, I am reminded that it is all about the plans God has for us. Romans 8.28, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. I look forward to learning more about your ministry in Watertown and everything God has blessed you with. Please keep both congregations, my family and I, in your thoughts and prayers as we prayerfully consider where my gifts could best be used. To God be the glory in Christ's service, Melissa Gudex. We keep her in our prayers. Christian Company will be meeting tomorrow in the school cafeteria, and all of you are invited. Ladies' Evening Fellowship will be Thursday, January 26th. And I see that it's at the home of my home. Or <laughs> this is news to me. What am I going to do? <laughs> anyway, next weekend is a big weekend for our congregation as well. It's Christian Education Weekend. And the children, all the children from preschool through grade 8 are going to sing on Sunday, both services. And there's going to be a preschool open house, take out chili, luncheon, uh, all the details as well as the details on what I mentioned before. They're all found in the worship folder. So please be sure to read that through and study that carefully to get all of that. And because of the chili luncheon over at the school, the Bible class for next week is going to be in the church here. And there won't be coffee and donuts beforehand. That's just a special change because of what's going on next weekend. Welcome committee meeting is going to be Tuesday the 31st at 5.30. It'll only last an hour, and uh, that, that can be for you. If you're not on it, that's okay. Come anyway and uh, make yourself at home at that meeting where we seek to welcome new members to the congregation. And so welcome committee meeting on Tuesday the 31st at 5.30. There's also a Vacation Bible School organizational meeting after the late service on February 5th. That'll be here in church because the same time, February 5th, after the 1030 service, there'll be a church picnic committee meeting in the council chambers. Live streamers, you heard uh, me mention at the beginning that this goes out live. We need live streamers. So if you're thinking that you could do this and it's not that hard, uh, you'll be trained well. We, we could use you. And uh, finally, just a note about these baby bottles. They are found at the entrances, both entrances, by, by the way, and I'm encouraging you strongly to go ahead and take one home with you for your family. If you want two for your family, go ahead and, and take them. And it's connected to Wells Lutherans for Life. In order to show that, I'm just going to open it up and just explain that this is like a piggy bank in a way where you can fill it up with coin or you can put a check and uh, there's an explanation inside it. And I'm just going to read this one paragraph. It says, you have a unique opportunity to be a part of this life-saving, soul-saving work through this baby bottle blessing campaign. When you fill the bottle with coins, currency, or check, you provide compassionate support while sharing the gospel with people who need the love of Jesus and a Christian influence in their lives. So it's called Baby Bottle Blessing. 
and uh, what a program. So be sure to take one home, and uh, I put down that we should return them by February 26th, so that's in about five weeks. Uh, and, it also, and also, in order to help Wells Lutherans for Life in another way, we do have a door offering uh, for the organization today, and you'll find offering baskets at both in entrances. So as you uh, give a gift, go ahead and take a baby bottle home. Did we want to say anything else, or did I do pretty well? All right, good. God's blessings to you all. Thank you. Thank you.